Don't in Galilee. Some say 
madman some say king wonder working rebel priest Jesus Christ the Nazarene he knew well what it would take to free us all from sin and grave man would have to die and only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday is coming don't lose hope cause Sunday is coming devil you're done you better start running Soldiers take him in as his friend betrayed him with a kiss. There before the mocking crowd, like a lamb to the slaughtered in a man.
Our reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they took and became, they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading. Amen. Welcome to the Community Church. If this is your first time with us, please feel very welcome. If you're watching us online, uh, it's great to have you with us as well. Um, and if you're across the road as well, uh, across the road is open if anybody w does want to go um, over there at any point, especially if you've got kids, if that's easier, no problem, but it's no problem being here as well. Um, it's great that you are with us to celebrate Easter and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I know that we live all our year in the power of the resurrection, but it's great to just celebrate today, isn't it, the Easter story. Uh, and just, again, just to, to come together as a family uh, and celebrate together. So I'm just going to pray, and then we're going to carry on with the rest of the, the morning. So, Father God, we just want to give you this space. We want to give you this time, God. We just want to thank you again for all that you did on the cross, for the power that we live in, for the, the freedom and the grace and the love that we live in because of what you did on the cross when you defeated death. And Father, I thank you that we can live a different story to what is unfolding in our culture because of the power of the cross and the freedom that you give us. Um, so Father God, we just give you this time. And Father, we thank you again for, for just Easter and the story that we celebrate today. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing, shall we?
Let's skew my sin was heavy The chains break every weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have the future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name I'll run out of that breath I love the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that breath I love the darkness Into your glorious day How could I not see him? I was looking for him, but I didn't see that he was there. How could I not recognize the one who saved my life, the one who set me free and allowed me to be me when everyone else wouldn't come near me? I knew he looked familiar, but I just didn't see. I thought he was a gardener just being nosy. Until he said my name, Mary. Then I knew, instantly I knew. Teacher, I cried. Don't hold on to me, he said, for I am going to ascend. Go tell your friends. I ran as fast as I could. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't believe my eyes. He'd done what he said. He was alive. Me on? Oh, yeah. Oh, anyway, you lot. Oh, haven't we got a tale to tell you? Haven't we? So there we were. We were walking along the road to Emmaus. Uh, and it, it was just so much going on. We were casually talking casually about everything. Casually talking. Casually. We do you know, we do that. casual well. Um, all of a sudden, this random guy comes and starts walking with us. I know. We had no clue who he was. And oh, yeah. Don't you forget. He actually asked us. What are you two talking about? I mean, that's who does that? That's a bit rude. Oh, right? How rude is that? I can't believe he'd do that. Like, it's just who does that? And plus, how does he know not know what's been going on over these past I, few days? I know, right? I mean, I thought everyone must have known what was going on. It wasn't a secret, really, was it? And anyway, we then told him, didn't we? Yeah, it is. 
We told him about we Jesus. Did. We did. <laughs> we did. We told him about Jesus being a prophet and being a really great teacher and healing people and doing miracles and everything, didn't we? We did. But you're forgetting one crucial thing. What? How do you not remember? We literally saw Jesus crucified before our very eyes. Oh, yeah, that like, bit. Uh, uh, so, so, some, of, we then, some of the women in our group, uh, they went and visited the tomb. But Jesus wasn't there. No. And, and, and then an angel came and, and said that Jesus was alive. Yeah. And then that guy who we're with, by the way, he told us we, we were foolish. Not <laughs> us. <laughs> Not no, understanding no, no. what the prophet said. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Which I thought, I thought that was quite rude. It because was Because he rude. doesn't know us at all, clearly, does he? <laughs> <laughs> no. So then he did remind us about what the prophets and the scriptures had said about Jesus. And by the time he finished talking to us, I think we knew everything, didn't we? But by the time he finished, we were nearly at Emmaus. I mean, we spoke for ages. We spoke more than Stephen. Hang on. No, you're all right. Leave it out. But our journey was long, though. Um, it, start, it started to get dark. So we th- and, and at this point, it looked like he was going to continue on it oh, walking. Yeah. yeah, it didn't look like he had anywhere to stay, let's say. Yeah, well, well, it was a good job that one of us spoke up and invited him in then, wasn't he it? He did. <laughs> um, anyway... Um, when we were eating, he did this thing. He took, he took the bread that we had oh, and yeah. he blessed it. Oh, yeah. And then he, he took it and he broke it. And he gave it to us, didn't he, Stephen? He, he, he did, did, yeah. But, but, yeah. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness. My heart was pounding so hard in my chest. I thought it was going to explode. Even I could feel it. <gasps> how could? What do you mean? Anyway, how could? How could we not have known? How could we not have seen it? I, I, I don't know. I can't believe it was him. It was Jesus, it was Jesus. in the flesh, and we didn't even recognize it. And then poof, he just poof. disappeared. <laughs> just disappeared. Gosh, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it myself. I, I just can't believe we hadn't noticed that Jesus was walking with us the no. whole time. Mm. We, we just turned each other yeah. amazed, and we were just like, care? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> care? Oh. How were our hearts not burning with passion My as he blown. taught scripture with us? How did we not see it was him? I know, and that's not even the end of the story, Stephen, is it? No. No, no, no. We need to tell you loads. Like, when we got back to the others, Peter told us he'd seen Jesus as well. Whew. Mind blown. Anyway, let's go. Come on. Come on. I haven't finished my coffee. No, come on. We ain't got time. Let's go, go, go. I didn't believe the others. How could I? I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. I saw him on that cross, all the pain and strain flowing through every vein. I saw him as vividly on that tree, hung out, exposed, life drawn out, the blood that poured out. I saw him there. I saw with my own eyes. Now they're telling me he's alive. I saw, how can they be telling me he's here when my eyes revealed it clear? I saw him without life. I can't unsee, so I need them to show me so I can see his hands, see his scars with my eyes, see him in life. Then maybe I would believe. Maybe I would know in my own heart. See, eight days passed We were all together again, only this time I was with them. The doors were locked, we were all in fear. I'm still thinking, how could he leave us here? I've been trying to believe, but still I haven't seen. The only image in my head is of him dead. Jesus, I need to see. Then he appeared, as the others had said before, but he couldn't have come through the door. Then I saw, peace be with you, he said. I saw him standing there, my eyes taking in a new image, no longer lifeless in a tomb, but there. Everything, his face, his hair. I saw him, but he's supposed to be dead. But I saw him and he turned to me and said, touch 
my hands. Feel the scars. Don't doubt, Thomas. Just believe. I saw him no longer on a tree, but right in front of me. My Lord, my God, I exclaimed. He was alive. I touched his hands, felt his side. Standing there before my very eyes, I saw. And then I could see how I didn't believe. But now I see he is alive. He said, there would be those with greater faith than I who would believe without their eyes, without needing to see scars. And he said, they will be blessed without needing proof, for they will know the real truth. For what I have seen with my eyes, you shall see that he is alive. After this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Tiberias Sea, the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed Twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brothers Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. The rest of them replied, We're going with you. They went out and got in a boat. They caught nothing that night. When the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them. He said, They did what he said. All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they weren't strong enough to pull it in. Then the disciple Jesus loved, said to Peter, It's the master. When Simon Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes, for he was stripped for work and dove into the sea. The other disciples came in by boat, for they weren't far from, from land, a hundred yards or so, pulling along the net full of fish. When they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking on it. Jesus said, Bring me the fish you've just caught. (laughs) Simon Peter joined them. And he said, Pull the net to the shore, 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't rip. Jesus said, Breakfast ready. (laughs) Not one of the disciples dared and asked, Who are you? They knew as the master. Jesus then took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had shown himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead.
Have you ever been mistaken for anybody else? I, I know I have. It actually happened to me this week. Um, does anybody recognize this guy? Anybody recognize this guy? Uh, this gentleman's name is Guy Gomer. And uh, back in 2006, he went for a job interview uh, for a job at the BBC. Uh, but due to uh, a misunderstanding at the reception desk, um, he ended up being mistaken for a gentleman called Guy Cuny. Now, Guy Cuny was an expert in a particular field. Guy Gomer wasn't. Uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, Guy Gomer ends up uh, in front of the cameras, uh, in front of millions of people being interviewed live on national TV. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get the job, um, but he did go on to be an internet sensation and is now kind of recognized as one of the, uh, the BBC's uh, most well-known bloopers. Um, so a case of mistaken identity. That's what we've been hearing about this morning, isn't it? Uh, here's Jesus freshly risen from the dead, appearing to a number of his friends, and all of them, without exception, fail to recognize him. They think that he's somebody else. And it's not like he hadn't told them in advance what was going to happen. We read it in the Bible that on multiple occasions, Jesus told his disciples that he would be raised from the dead. And not only that, he even told them when. He said on the third day, I'll be risen from the, I'll be raised from the dead. So look, here's an example from Mark. Um, yeah, there you go. They were on their way to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. Again, they, again, he's told them before. Again, he took the 12 aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said. And the Son of Man, that's Jesus, one of the, how he described himself. And the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him, spit on him, flog him, kill him, and three days later, he will rise. And that's exactly what happens. Jesus gets handed over to the Romans. They mock him, they spit on him, they beat him, whip him, and then they crucify him, and he dies. And yet he says, three days later, I will rise. And it wasn't even as if this was like some closely guarded secret between Jesus and his disciples. Uh, even the Pharisees, his enemies, knew this. Uh, in fact, the day after Jesus' crucifixion, the Pharisees went and asked Pilate, who was the Roman governor, uh, to place a guard outside the tomb because they said, Sir, they said, we remember that while he was alive, Jesus said, after three days, I will rise again. And not only that, but Jesus even told the disciples where he's going to go next. He says, uh, after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. So here we are, three days after Jesus is crucified. And even after he's told them what's going to happen, they all, without exception, fail to recognize him. Put yourself in their shoes. Jesus, the one that you come to realize is the Messiah, the Holy One of God, the one who's going to save you, the one who's going to liberate you from the oppressors uh, of the Roman rule, the one who is, in fact, going to go on to rule the world, has just been brutally beaten and then nailed to a cross. You've seen him die. And then his torn and bloody body has been removed from the cross, and your hopes and dreams have been sealed in the tomb along with him. How are you feeling right now? Maybe scared, maybe anxious, bewildered, defeated, doubtful. And if you think about it, you've witnessed Jesus being crucified on Friday. So it makes no sense to see him standing in front of you on Sunday morning. Whether he said, I'll rise again in three days or not, it defies logic, doesn't it? It defies logic. It makes no sense at all for Jesus to be there. And he doesn't look the same either, especially not when you think about how he looked the last time that you saw him. Maybe that's why Mary, who'd been there when he died on the cross, blooded and beaten and broken, mistook him for somebody else at first. And then... There's this, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. We read that the risen Jesus comes alongside the disciples as they're walking from Jerusalem. Jesus 
asks them what they're talking about. Let's pick it up in the story of Luke. They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? Jesus asks. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. So here are the two disciples. Uh, we read in Luke that they've, they've heard already that the women have reported that Jesus has risen from the dead. And these guys recognize the significance that today is the third day. And yet we read that they are standing with their faces downcast. Maybe the reason for that is in their response to Jesus. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Here they are, day three, waiting for Jesus the Messiah to return, triumphant at the head of the army, ready to set the Israelites free. But there's no fanfare. There's no army. There's no blaze of glory. There's just a long and dusty walk back home. Maybe they didn't recognize Jesus because he didn't look how they expected the Messiah to look. But for me, the piece of these accounts that I find the most interesting is how they finally come to realize that they are indeed with the risen, living, breathing Jesus. The Jesus who is more alive now than he's ever been. And the how lies in the familiar. It's their familiarity with Jesus that finally breaks through to help them to see him for who he is. For the disciples on the road to Emmaus, it's actually when they invite him in for dinner. It's a seven-mile journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and we don't know at what point Jesus joined them on the journey, but we do know that it was long enough for him to be able to unpack the, the, the scriptures, starting from Moses and all the way through the prophets, uh, and he pointed out all the bits that kind of directed them towards him. And yet, it's that simple action of Jesus giving thanks and breaking the bread at dinner that the coin drops. And then they realize that it is Jesus alive and with them. What was it about that familiar way that Jesus broke the bread that made them realize it was him? What about Peter? Peter is in Galilee. Well, where else is he going to be? Because that's where Jesus has told him to go. So he's in Galilee. And he's been fishing with his mates, and they've had a rubbish night. They've not caught anything. Uh, But they then see someone on the beach, and this person suggests that they might want to cast their nets on the other side of the boat. And lo and behold, the nets are full, straining at the seams with fish. And that's the trigger. Peter is familiar with this. This has happened before. In fact, it happened when Jesus met Peter for the first time. This familiar event with Jesus right at the very heart of it, that's how Peter realizes it's Jesus that he's talking to. And then Mary, waiting in the pre-dawn light so that she can be the first one to the tomb, overwhelmed with the pain of losing Jesus, with tears streaming down her face, She turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked the woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. It was when Jesus said her name that she realized it was him. What was it about the familiar way that he called her name that made her know it was him? What subtle little inflections that only he used when he talked to her that made her instantly, without hesitation, know that this was the risen Jesus alive and standing right in front of her? It was in the familiar that they all knew 
Jesus. They'd spent time with him. They'd done life with him. And that was how they knew it was him. So how about you? How familiar with Jesus are you? Do you know his ways? What have you seen him do? Do you know it's him when he calls your name? The church leader and author Louis Giglio says, God is not obscure, mysteriously engaging in a cosmic game of hide and seek. No, God is announcing his presence with every sunrise and declaring his beauty with every sunset that follows. He has gone the extra mile to pursue you and reveal himself to you. God wants you to see him in all his glory and splendor. God wants you to see him. Spend time with Jesus. Invite Jesus to walk alongside you. Learn from Jesus. Yoke yourself to Jesus. Or perhaps you've got doubts. Perhaps you're not sure whether Jesus is who he says he is. That's okay. Thomas had doubts too. John puts it like this. Now, Thomas, known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my God and my Lord. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas needed evidence. Now, Thomas, we're told in Scripture, he's got a nickname. His nickname is Didymus. Well, Didymus literally means twin or twinny. So we don't know the name of his twin, but I often wonder if Thomas was quite used to being mistaken for his twin. So when the disciple says, we've seen Jesus, I wonder if Thomas called upon his own life experience and thought, yeah, but have you? Or have you seen somebody who looks a bit like him? But note, there's no condemnation in Jesus' reply. He says, you want evidence? Come, examine the evidence. Stick your fingers into my wounds. And if you're not sure yet if Jesus really is who he says he is, then I'd invite you to come along and explore the evidence. Um, Here at the community church, we run an Alpha course, and you'll see a little note on your chair, which is all about Alpha, inviting you to Alpha. Alpha is a place where people who who don't yet know Jesus, but have got questions and are curious and want to wrestle with the evidence, that's where you can come and do just that with other people who have got similar questions and similar queries and are struggling to get to know it. So if that sounds like you and you want to maybe become more familiar with Jesus, then I'd invite you to come and talk to me. Talk to anybody that you've seen up front on stage or Jot your details on the back of there. Put your phone number, your name, and your email. And just pop it in one of the little giving stations just at the back uh, here at the front or at the back of the room. And uh, one of us will be in touch. Thank you. We're going to continue to worship and celebrate Jesus being alive now. So if you want to stand, let's celebrate together.
I'll praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters. My enemies drowning. It's a long
looking to order Who makes me open A son and daughter The King of glory The King above all kings Rules and nations With truth and justice Shines like the sun All of this brilliance The King of glory The King above all kings Nothing can stand against 
Nothing can stand against our God. We'll sing hallelujah. The battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Father God, we thank you that we can live in that freedom today. And Father God, I thank you that you know every person in this room. You know every person watching online. Father, you know our stories. You know our situations. And Father God, we just speak Jesus over every situation. We speak the power in the name of Jesus over every situation in this room. Father God, I pray for anxiety, for worry to be lifted off to be lifted off by the power of the name of Jesus as we step into the power of the cross. We claim it. This is not just another Easter. This is not just another Sunday. Father God, we want to step into the freedom that you paid for on the cross this morning. We want our lives to be transformed into the likeness of you this morning, Father God. Father, I pray for everybody now just that your Holy Spirit would just rest on them. Father, we just want to step into the freedom that you you paid for with your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Incredible, guys. Take a seat. Uh, Can we just give everybody uh, a round of applause who's been involved this Sunday? Uh, Mrs. Jolly organizes most of everything that we do that's like this. Uh, So pray for the cleaning team as well. They're going to be a few hours this week. Um, But yeah, thank you ever so much for joining us and celebrating this Sunday. Um, As as Laurie provoked us, I would just encourage you to investigate what all of this means. Um, It has transformed most people's lives in this room. So you could grab probably anybody at coffee and just say, tell me what Jesus has done in your life. And I'm sure they'll have a story. Um, And also, I would just encourage you in in the quiet, you know, when you maybe get five minutes this afternoon or you've got some time on your own, just pray. Just speak to God. Speak to him. He'll reveal himself. He wants to. He's not a hidden, a hidden God like Laurie said. And uh, grab the Alpha invite if you want to come and, do, and get involved with Alpha. Um, so God bless you all. God bless you online and across the road. It's great to uh, have you with us. We're going to have some refreshments now and some coffee and stuff. So we will just pack away some of the black chairs at the back just to give us some space. Uh, and uh, we will see you all uh, next Sunday if you're around. And uh, yeah, God bless you all.